Extending the frequency analysis to a multi-term phase is normally known as n-grams. The Microsoft Azure's primary job is to see that it starts building application that will support the natural language. The text translation will also take up. It supports the text to text between 60 different languages. It's able to pick up English and Spanish but not the French words separately. Good morning and welcome to the first session, Chapter 4, Unit 1, Third Semester BCom, Artificial Intelligence, where we are going to speak about natural language processing. Now, this NLP or the natural language processing is the key area of artificial intelligence. Why do we say this? Because this would support all the applications that you see, hear, speak, and understand the users altogether. The power of AI is to create something exactly like you. So if I have to understand what the user is speaking, what the user is trying to reach, what the user wants to communicate, then I want to go into the natural language processing. Now using the text analytics, translation, language understanding services, the Microsoft Azure makes it easy to build applications that support the natural language. So what's the main function here? What's the challenge that we are looking in here is that you need to create a system that is able to exactly work on the analytics, the text and data and convert it, make it in such an easy way that it builds the applications and start supporting the natural language. Now we know that there are many dialects, many languages in this world. Now English might be considered as a common language, but that is not the mandatory language that has been spoken all over the globe. So every country will have its own language, will have its own dialect, and it has got hundreds and thousands of variants. So the Microsoft Azure's primary job is to see that it starts building application that will support the natural language, followed by the text analytics. Now, this is a process through which you will see that an artificial intelligence algorithm running on a computer evaluates the same attributes in text to determine specific insights. Now, this is very, very important for each one of us to know why. Now, the text analytics is a process where artificial intelligence is running on a computer system. And this is something which is going to just evaluate and attribute the text factor. And this is something where you're going to see that the text attributes are taken into position. It starts evaluating. It starts finding out how it is and where it is and starts determining the specific insights altogether. The commonly used techniques that can be used to build the software to analyze the text are as follows. Statistical analysis in terms of used in the text that we are talking about. For example, removing common words and performing the frequency analysis so that you see in what frequency that word is often spoken. Now you'll also see that you get some clues about the main subject. Now, for example, when we use the word A and B, or we're going to talk about certain words like I'm going to talk about an animal, I'm going to talk about a place, about a vision, all those things would start coming into this frequency analysis. Extending the frequency analysis to a multi-term phase is normally known as n-grams. Now, what is an n-gram? It is a two-word phrase like a bigram. A three-word phrase is also a trigram and then it goes on. So, you can see that be it so, 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 and, then all those kind of words can be analyzed in this text analytics matter, followed by the techniques. We are going to apply this concept called a stemming or lemmatization algorithms to normalize the words before counting them. Now, what is this all about? Technique to extract the base form of the word by removing the affixes on them. Now, let's say a word called like power, powered, powerful are being interpreted as the same word. But you know that meaning changes according to the word that's going to be used in the sentence. So keeping the base word as power, you would be probably able to see powerful or powered or overtakes. All these kind of words might sound similar, but they have a different meaning. So what we try to do, we would try to keep the base word and remove all the other factors. 
linguistic structural rules which are very very important to analyze a sentence for example noun phrase then we're going to talk about verbs and adjectives and so on these are all very very important things because encoding words they are also going to be a part of this through which we can train the machine learning model so whenever we are applying this linguistic structures into picture we need to train the system slowly steadily to understand the words the annotation the pronunciation the meaning the usage pattern one by one so that the computer starts acting as if it's able to understand the natural language that is spoken up by the user now creating vectorized models look at the word itself that captures semantic relationship between words in n dimensional space now for example it was so hot now when i say the word so hot or so cold or it's something very chill all those kind of words have got a semantic relationship where we try to address the weather we try to address the situation the climate or the room temperature conditions or the surrounding environment all these factors will start coming into understanding the relationship between the location and to that of the assignment of the words so all these things are going to be taught in the vectorized models the modeling technique maps the words into corresponding vectors of course yes to real numbers and it gives out some feature of the text model to train yeah this is very very important for us for example assign values to the words like flower and plant locate them close to one another while skateboard might be given a value position that it is much farther away now let's try to understand whenever we are going to relate certain terms flower plant tree leaves all these kinds of things might be close to one another because we try to relate we try to locate whereas when i say the word skateboard might be given a value that positions it much far away because it's not a related word as we are talking about it the next one the capabilities in a language service so what is it all about the first thing is the language detection so we have an iso standard also the iso 6391 language code which is in english the language name is english used here a score is which is trying to indicate the confidence in the language detection now why this word is now coming into picture the word confidence in the language how close are you how confident how cool are you how much are you built in in terms of understanding the language from a system standpoint is very important see for example let's say that i'm going to put in this phrase here a fantastic place for lunch the soup was delicious now this is a common phrase of language that is used between you and me but if the computer is going to use it you need to understand that it is going to talk about certain values certain objects here so the computer must be able to understand that yes we are talking about a particular object which is delicious and that is something which is consumable in nature so what i'm trying to do is i'm going to connect various thing and make it flow look at very natural now for example i'm going to use a spanish phrase all together where i say comida maravillosa la, la gran services now when i use all these kind of intonations and i start speaking spanish now that might not look really because unless and until i get a fluish i mean the native accent of a spanish accent to me i would not be able to get this into natural thing similarly if i'm going to talk about french where i say the croc monsieur avec fritis was terrific bon appetit now when i say bon appetit now i'm using a french term all together these words have to match synchronize with the computer so that it's able to flow it's able to go with the natural process all together now let's look into here now we have the language english en the score is 1 now for spanish now we review that's es espanol so we say 1 again the score review 3 english again we get 0.9 so what does it show is that the language detected for review 3 is english despite containing the mix of english and french so what does this exactly tell us is that it's able to pick up english and spanish but not the french words separately now sentiment analysis the text analytics capability of language service can evaluate and return sentiment scores label for each sentence 
This capability is useful for detecting positive negative sentiment in social media, customer reviews, discussion forums and above. The service evaluates the text and returns as sentiment score range from 0 to 1, the values closer being 1 and that of a positive sentiment. The scores that are close to a middle range of 0 0.5 are considered to be neutral or indeterminate. So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to put a sentiment analysis where I'm going to say the score ranges between 0 and 1, 0 being the least and 1 being the maximum. And anywhere when I see the values coming as close as 1, then they are positive sentiment. That means, yes, we are reaching the true value. We are getting the value meaning out of it. Scores which are in the middle of 0 0.5, I consider it neutral, neither a success nor a failure. And anything that moves towards zero is definitely considered to be a failure or a negative sentiment for me. So now what we're going to do here is that I'm going to just read out a sentence. Let's see, where do we stand? We had dinner at this restaurant last night. And the first thing I noticed was how courteous the staff was. We were greeted in a friendly manner and taken to our table right away. The table was clean, the chairs were comfortable and the food was amazing. Now I'm trying to describe a dinner or a eating activity that took place last night and I'm trying to describe it in my flow, in my fluency, in my English as far as possible. Now for the computer to understand the same natural flow of what is being said, how it has to be analyzed, how the reviews have to be picked up, that's where the sentimental analysis works together. A key phrase extraction, which is very important. Key phrase is something where it's a concept of evaluating the text in the document, then identifying the main talking points of the document. Now consider the restaurant scenario discussed. Depending on the volume of the surveys that you have collected, it can take a long time to read through the reviews. Instead, you can use the key phrase as the extraction capabilities of language service summarize the main points no doubt about it you might also receive a review like this we had dinner for birthday celebration it was fantastic all those kind of things where you know the ambience was relaxed these are all complete words that are being put across in a different way in a different service altogether where we get the complete analysis the ideology of how it has been done now the key phrase is that now you see these words attentive service great food birthday celebration fantastic experience, table, friendly hostess, dinner, ambience, place. All these things are keywords. Why do I say this as keywords is that in the review or in the analysis, these words might be repeated again and again. So whenever a customer is reading the review or whenever a user is seeing that, he'll definitely catch upon these words, which will tell him that this is about a review on a restaurant or on an eating place. Now, entity recognition, so which talks about person, for example, Bill Gates, John, name, location, Paris, New York, quantity, which can be a number, quantity, which can also be a percentage, date and time we are talking about, or date time like this. So these are all certain key factors that we are putting in. And what is this entity is all about? It's about essentially a type or a particular type of item that we are putting in. In some cases, it might be also a subtype altogether. Now, entity recognition. Now, for example, how do we do it? I ate at the restaurant in Seattle last week. So Seattle is an entity. It's a name of a place located in US. When did you eat? Last week. So the date and time comes into picture. So automatically, when you put in that link here, and when you click on it, it takes you to that location. It makes you feel that, yes, this is where we had it. So we have a precise URL to take you there and make you understand the feeling. Now, recognize and synthesize speech. So AI solutions will accept commands and provide spoken responses. Two things happens. One is a speech recognition, where the ability to detect the spoken input. Next, we talk about speech synthesis. Generate spoken output. The words that have been spoken will be now generated. Next, we'll come into speech recognition, where we will also see that it's taking the spoken word, converting into the data. It synthesizes the same speech, is the reverse of speech recognition. It's concerned with vocalizing data. Speech synthesis is typically, it requires the following, text to be that spoken, voice to vocalize the speech. So you have to come out, make it look like a local data. And this will typically happen when you will start seeing that the words, that individual words are being assigned with a phonetic sound. It then breaks down the transcription. It is converted into an audio format 
all the parameters are determined generating an audio wave finally it is written into a file now the azure resources for speech services we have a speech to text api and a text to text api all these things are primarily the software which is used to convert the batch transcription of how it is required so text to text would all do that enables you to convert it into audible speech speech to text will convert it from the words to that of the audio file now translate uh, text and speech so you will see that the translator service is used in each of these cases and that will enable us to read how it is going on the text translation will also take up it supports the text to text between 60 different languages while using the service you must also specify the language that you are translating and how the codes are working all together here now with that you also have the converters as we are speaking about so speech to text text to speech speech translation all these things are the equipment generators that are being used in speech services which will actually help the user to understand the video that is the text source altogether which is being taken so it's one of the most powerful tools that we are using in ai to understand the language factor with this, I come to the end of the session. I hope and believe that all the factors that are spoken here will be of a great use to you, both in terms of practical as well as in the daily walk of life. In the upcoming sessions, we are going to learn more about the AI terms. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.